Starting the Gemara today on the bottom of the few of them is based, the last two words, the last few words. Man Tana Lahode Tana Rabbonon. <coughs> Who is the Tana of the following Braise? So here we're talking about the doorways in the base of Mikdash and the Azara, whether they needed to have a mezuzah or not. And the Gemara before brought that none of the doorways had to have a mezuzah, it's not a regular place of dwelling. Besides the Lishkas Parahedrin, where there was an argument. Rabbanan said it has to have a mezuzah because the Kayan lives there for seven days. And Abu Yehuda said that only a gzedim with the Rabbanan, that it shouldn't look like a prison, does it have to have a mezuzah. But Minatayda doesn't need a mezuzah. So here we have a Bryce, and the Gemara wanted to know which one of those two opinions is this a Bryce going according to. If what? Yes. Yeah. All of the gates in the base of Mikdash did not have a mezuzah. Chutz Mishan Nikner, besides the entrance that's called Shan Nikner, why? It's from that entrance that you go directly to this room called Lishkas Parhedrin. So the Shar, the entranceway that takes you into the room of Lishkas Parhedrin, just like the Lishkas Parhedrin itself needs a mezuzah, the Shar also needs a mezuzah, as we'll soon see in the Gemara. So now the Gemara says, so whose opinion is this? Leime Rabbanani. Shall we say that that's only the Rabbanan's opinion, Veloy Rabbi Yehuda, not Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, and the Gemara explains why, the Rabbi Yehuda, if it would be Rabbi Yehuda, he gufe gezeira. According to Rabbi Yehuda, Lishkas Parhedrin itself does not require a mezuzah and a teira. It's only with the Rabbanan that Chachavim made the gezeira, it shouldn't look like a prison. So if that room itself is only a gezeira with the Rabbanan, so then the entranceway, the Shar Nikner, should also be required to have a mezuzah, which would be a gezeira legezeira. It's a double decree that you know, the first decree <coughs> brings to a second decree that they instituted to have a mezuzah, even on Shar Nikner. According to Rabbi Yehuda, that wouldn't make sense. We never make one gezeira on top of another gezeira. But according to the Rabbanon, so Lishkas Parhadrin requires a mezuzah menateira. So the entranceway, Shar Nikner also does. So the Gemara answer is not necessarily a filotei of Yehuda, that Bryce the Kafal of Yehuda's opinion, Kulo Chod we could say that this Gzeda, the Bechacham instituted that Lishkas Parhedrin should have a mezuzah, at the same time they instituted that the room itself should have a mezuzah, and the entranceway, Shar Nikner, should also have a mezuzah. It wasn't two separate Gzedas. So it could be Rabbi Yudha's opinion. Here the Gemara brings the source that even entranceways, Sha'arim, also need a mezuzah, not just a door to a house, to a room. Tana Rabbanan Abraisa, we learned, Bish Arecha. When the Pasik says, you place the mezuzah on your gates. Echot shari batim refers to the gates of the house. Vechot shari chatseres, the gates to courtyards. Vechot shari medinis, the gates to enter into a province. Vechot shari ayodai, so the gates to enter into cities. Yeshben, chayvas, mitzvah, lemokayim, shemshenem, achsavtom, amazuzes, besecho, visharecho. There's the mitzvah to put up the mezuzah over there because the Pasik says, uvisharecho, not only mezuzes, besecho, but also visharecho, all these kinds of entrances. So based on this, Abai asks Rav Safra, Hani Abuli the Mechuza, these uh, gates, these entrances into Mechuza, the city of Mechuza, my time le Avdulu Rabban al Mezuzah. Why do Chachamim not put up a Mezuzah there? So Rashi says that Mechuza was a city that was mostly hidden. Since it's mostly hidden, so it's a shar, it's an entrance to a city. And we said that the entrance of a city requires a Mezuzah. So why didn't they put up a Mezuzah there? So this Rashi is an interesting Rashi. This Rashi teaches you that if you have a place which is mostly hidden, even if there's Goyim there, it's obligated to have a mezuzah. You can simply, seemingly apply that also to a shared space in a house where you have Yidin and Goyim. Theoretically, you have Yidin and Goyim that are living together, and uh, it's mostly hidden, a minority Goyim. Let's say you have a building, and mostly, uh, most of the apartments are occupied by Yidin, and the minority of them are Goyim. But if Rav is Yidin, then it's going to be Chayv in the mezuzah. That's what it seems from this Rashi. Regarding the city Mechuzah. So why didn't they make a mezuzah there? On Malay, so Rav Safra answered, Hanu, you're making a mistake. It wasn't really that, it wasn't really entrance, uh, entranceway, a shah to the city of Mechuzah. It looked like an entranceway, but really what it was, Chizuk <coughs> Akro de Kuvi Hudavi. It was sort of a foundation or this support that was made to this building of Kuvi, to these towers of Kuvi. That's what it was really made for. As the Gemara will now explain, this, this big tower of Kuvi <coughs> was a prison that was built over there. And then below this prison, there was this entranceway that was built as a support to this big building. That, but it wasn't really an entranceway. It wasn't built as an entranceway to the city. 
Amale, so Abaya asked back the question, Vakra de Kuvi Gufe. Okay, so even if it's serving sort of as a support and an entranceway into this big building, into this big prison, to buy a mezuzah. For that itself, it should require it to be to have a mezuzah. The Ha'izba Dire Lishaymer, because even though it was a big prison and a prison does not require a mezuzah, but this prison also has a place of dwelling for the guard of the prison, the Shaymer Beisa Asurim. And for that itself, shouldn't this entranceway require a mezuzah, even if it's not an entranceway into the city? The Tanya, as we learned in the Brais, regarding a shul. Beis HaKneses, Shiesh Boi Beis Diru Lachazen. So a Beis HaKneses, a place that is only made to come in and to daven there, it's not, it's not a place where you live there at all, does not require a mezuzah. But if it's a shul, Shiesh Boi Beis Diru Lachazen, it has a place of dwelling for the chazan knesses, for the for the shamish of the shul, the attendant of the shul, he lives there in a room. So then chayev is mezuzah. So then it is chayev in a mezuzah. So the same thing with the prison. Even if the prison is not chayev in mezuzah, but the entranceway should be chayev in mezuzah, since there's the guard that lives there. Elam Rabaye, so Abaye answered regarding the city of Mechuzah, a different answer. Mishum Sakana. The reason they didn't put up a mezuzah there is because it's a danger. And the Gemara explains what kind of a danger this is. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa. The mezuzah of a private individual should be inspected once, twice that is, twice in seven years to see that it's still kosher, that the writing didn't rub off or nothing happened to it. So you check a mezuzah once, twice that is, in seven years. The shorabim, a mezuzah that's put up in a public place, Pamayim b'yoyvul has to be checked only twice in fifty years. This is the way it's brought Shulchan Aruch. <coughs> now on this, the story in the Brayse was brought. Amar Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda said, "Maise ba'artibin echad." There was a story with an artibin. What's artibin? Either it's a name of a person, or as she says, artibin is because it's a name of a person that this is his job to to check over mezuzahs. So in Aramaic, it's called an artibin. Shahayabaydik mezuzahs b'shuka elyon shulzipayri. He was inspecting the mezuzahs. In the upper marketplace in the city of Tzipayri, Motzei Kazdor Echad, and an officer found what he was doing, that he was putting up or taking off the mezuzah of the wall in the city, and he was uh, suspecting him of doing something suspicious, of putting up this kind of a kishif there, or so whatever it is. The not only men or of zuz, he took from him a penalty of a thousand zuz. So from here we see that putting up a mezuzah in a public place sometimes could be dangerous because the authorities will suspect you of doing something which is kishif. And therefore, in the city of Mechuzah, that was the reason they didn't put up a mezuzah. So the Gemara asks on this story, Va'amr Abelazah, or didn't Rabelazah say, Shluch mitzvah, eni zaykin. A person that's doing a mitzvah will not, uh, will not get harmed. So how over here did he get harmed by, by checking this mezuzah? Or Bechla was saying <coughs> that sometimes you don't put up a mezuzah in public because of this reason. Answer is, If you're doing something, even if it's a shliach mitzvah, but you go to a place or you do something where the harm, the damage is something which is, which is uh, established, is something which is sort of definite because that's common, shani, that's different. That's something that even a shliach mitzvah could get harmed. The Pasuk says, the raya of this is from Shmuel. When the Abishah tells Shmuel to go and anoint David the Melech as a king, Shmuel, so Shmuel says, how could I go and do this? V'shoma Shmuel v'haraguni. And Shaul will hear about this and he'll kill me. Vayem Hashem, and Ebesha agrees to Shaul and Melech's taina, and Ebesha tells him, Eglas baka tikach v'yadecha. So you should take uh, the animal, a, ha- a calf, into your hands. V'amata was bayach l'ashem basi. When Shaul will ask you, what are you doing here? Why did the prophet all of a sudden come? Tell him I came into Yerushalayim to bring korbanis. So Hashem told him to disguise himself. So you see Hashem accepted his taina that he may get harmed from Shaul HaMelech even though he was doing, going to do a mitzvah to fulfill Hashem's command to go and anoint David HaMelech. Tani Rav Kahane Kameh Rav Yehuda. Rav Kahane learned the following b'raise in front of Rav Yehuda. Beis HaTeven. A house made to store straw. Or Beis HaBaka. Or a barn. Or Beis HaEitzim. Storage of wood. Or Beis HaEitzris. And a place that's in general. Storage for all kinds of things. These are places where Shapturim in Amazuzah. They're potter from an Amazuzah. And the Braise then says, what's the reason? Mipnei shahanoshim nei oisais vehen. Because the women beautify themselves there. Now, the Gemara explains, what does this mean? Noisis, actually. So we'll see it with Noisis here. This will be a big machloikis between Rav Yehuda and Rav Kahana. What, mm-hmm. How you translate the word Neisis. So Rav Kahana said, Umay Neisis. What does Neisis mean? Reichatzais. 
They washed themselves. They bathed. This is the areas that they used to bathe themselves. Back in then, there was no bath, uh, uh, bathtubs in the house. They, they used these outside areas, these different storage houses, to go and bathe themselves there. So because the women bathe themselves there, so it's not uh, respectful to have a mezuzah on such, in such a kind of a room. That's the pshat that Rav Kahana said in this b'raiseh. So Rav Yehuda disagrees with this. So Rav Yehuda says to Rav Kahana, <laughs> so you're saying the only reason that all these places are potter from a mezuzah is because the women bathe there. Hostome, but any of these kind of storage houses, if it would just be a storage house and the women don't bathe there, chayoven, they would be obligated in the mezuzah. But Vatanya, another price that we learned, refes, boko, or a barn, petura a mezuzah. It's potter from a mezuzah. And it doesn't say because the women bathe there. A barn is potter from a mezuzah. And the same thing, all the other examples, the potter from a mezuzah because it's not made for a dwelling. It's not a place for a person to live. So it's not Beisecha. So therefore, Rabbi Yudah says a different pshat. Elamai neyoisais. When it says in the Braisa the word neyoisais, it doesn't mean that the women bathe there. Rather, it means miskashtais. The women beautify themselves there. And you have to read the Braisa completely differently. Vahachi katani. And this is how you read the Braisa. Afal pi. You have to add these words, afal pi. Even though, sha'anoshem miskashtais behen that these different storage places, and even a barn, is a place that the women use to go there to beautify themselves, nevertheless, peturin, it's still going to be potter. Although it's a place that does serve as a dwelling, somewhat, because the women go and beautify themselves there, but it's still going to be potter from a mezuzah. <coughs> That's the pshat of the b'raise. But if, according to Rav Yudah's opinion, if it would be stam a barn or stam a storage house, so then, for sure, it's going to be potter from a mezuzah. That's uh, posh that everybody agrees that it would be potter from a mezuzah. Amalei Rav Kahane, Rav Kahane asks back to Rav Yehuda on his opinion. You're saying that these storage houses that women also use to adorn themselves there, peturin, they would be potter from a mezuzah. But Tanya, what we learn a so we learned refes baka peturim and amazuza. A barn is potter from amazuza, but v'shan nashim is skash tisba. But if it's a barn that there's a spot with it that the women use to adorn themselves there, chayev is v'mazuza. It's obligated in a mezuzah. That's enough for it to be considered to be a base dira, a place of dwelling. The fact that a woman uses it to adorn herself there. So Abraisa clearly says that you are chayev. So how could you have you to say that even though the miskash is there, it's potter? So, Ella Mayis Lach So, what are you, Rav Yehuda, going to answer? Rav Kahana is speaking here. Rav Kahana is saying to Rav Yehuda, what are you going to answer to my question that I brought you from this other Braisa? Miskashtois, Tanoi. This example of a storage house or a barn, and women also use it to adorn themselves there, whether it's obligated in the mezuzah or not, do I say that it's really just a barn or a storage house? Or do I say the fact that women also use it to adorn themselves is enough for it to be chayv in the mezuzah? So, this is a machlaikis Tanoi. You're going to say to me that it's two different prices and it's an argument. So, Lididi Nami, I could answer you the same thing according to my interpretation of the Braise. Stome Tanoi, any regular storage house, Stome, a regular storage house or a regular barn that has no other use other than what it serves for, for as a storage or a barn, is also a Machleikis Tanoim. You asked me a question from another Braise, it's a Machleikis Tanoim. That's my opinion. So, so, it comes out over here that according to Rav Kahana, a regular barn or storage house. Is it chayev in mezuzah or potter? It's a machleik is tanoyim. If it's a place that women adorn themselves there, then for sure it's going to be chayev in a mezuzah. According to Rav Yehuda, a regular barn is for sure going to be potter from a mezuzah. Regular storage house is potter from a mezuzah. If it's a place that women adorn themselves there, then it's a machleik is tanoyim if that's enough to obligate it in the, uh, for a mezuzah, even though it's really just a storage house. And the Gemara now brings a b'raise, and this b'raisa will be interpreted according to both Rav Yehuda and Rav Kahana's opinion. The Tanya, we learned in the b'raisa. Be'isecha. The Torah says, put up a mezuzah in your house. What does this mean? Be'isecha miyuchod l'cha. A house that's designated for you to use and live there. What does this exclude? Prat l'be'isa teven. Excluding a house to store straw there. Be'isa bakar, a barn, l'be'isa eitzim. Place to store wood, l'be'isa eitzim. And any other storage. Shepturin min mezuzah. All these places are potter from mezuzah. The, and then the b'raisa continues, v'yesh mechaivin. However, there's another opinion that says that even in all these kinds of places, storages, it's still obligated in a mezuzah. <clears throat> and then the b'raisa continues, be'emes amru, the truth was said, this is an expression that's used when everyone agrees to this. Be'isa kisei, a bathroom, u'be'isa bursaki, 
a, a, a place of tannery <laughs> where you, the, the hides of the animals are being worked out over there. Or based on merchats, a, a, a bathhouse, or based on tefila, a place of uh, mikveh to be table there, to, to table there. Vishan noshim neoisos behen. And then the Brais also says the place that women are neoisos there. So neoisos has two interpretations, as we'll see. The Gemara will explain that Rav Yudah and Rav Kahana argue regarding the meaning of neoisos here as well. Pitorin and Amazuza, they are potter from Amazuza. So now the Gemara will explain this Braise, both according to Rav Kahana's opinion and according to Rav Yehuda's opinion. Rav Kahana metaretz l'tamei. Rav Kahana explains this Braise according to his opinion, but Rav Yehuda metaretz l'tamei. And Rav Yehuda will explain the Braise according to his opinion. Rav Kahana metaretz l'tamei. Rav Kahana read this Braise as follows. And the Gemara starts again from the beginning. What did the Braise say? Beisecha means beisecha meyuchad l'cha. A house designated for your own use. Prat l'beisa tevel, l'beisa bakar, l'beisa eitzim, l'beisa eitzim, shepturim min ha-mezuzah. All these places of storage that are exempt from a mezuzah. So according to Rav Kahana, what is the Braise talking about? Bistam. In a storage that's just used for a storage. It's not used for <coughs> anything else. And then on that, the Braise says, V'yesh shemechaivin bistam. There is an opinion that says that even stam a storage, not used for any other personal use, is also going to be chayiv in a mezuzah. So this is Rav Kahana's opinion, that Stama storage is a place where there's an argument, if it's Chayiv or Potter from a mezuzah. Then how does Rav Kahana interpret the rest of the Braisa? Then the Braisa says that everyone agrees, Beis Akise, Beis Abursiki, Beis Amechaz, Beis Atfila, all these places. And then the Braisa says, Vishahan Noshim Nei Oisa Ispehen, they are Potter from a mezuzah. What does Hanoshim Nei Oisa Ispehen mean? Umay Nei Oisa What does Nei Oisa mean? Reichatzais, a place where the women bathe themselves there. Pturin menamazuzah, because the women bathe themselves there, so therefore it's it's not it's 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 not proper to have a mezuzah with Hashem's name in a place where the women bathe themselves. That's why it's going to be potter from a mezuzah. So this is again following Rav Kahana's interpretation of the word neoisais. Neoisis means that we're talking about let's say a barn or any of these storages where the women bathe there. It's going to be potter from a mezuzah. Even though before we said that there's a machlekes regarding storage places, there's a machlekes if it's chayav a pata. But if it's a place that the women use also to bathe themselves there, everybody will agree that it's pata. But the Gemara asks on this interpretation of Rav Kahana, if you're saying that neoisis means that it's a place that the women bathe there, isn't that the exact same thing as beisa merchatz? Why does the Brice say beisa merchatz and the place where women adorn themselves, which means they bathe there, it's the same thing. So the Gemara answer is no, it's not exactly the same thing. Why not? Because Ashmi'in on Merchatz the Rabbim, the Braise is telling me that when you have a public bathhouse, that it's going to be exempt from a mezuzah, Ashmi'in on Merchatz the Yachid. And it's also telling you a private bathhouse that it's potted from a mezuzah. Why does it have to teach me both? So I would think to say, Merchatz the Rabbim, the Nafish Zuame, in a public bathhouse where it's, there's much more filth over there, it's much dirtier. <coughs> so over here I would say that it's exempt from, if it's no mezuzah. But a private bathhouse which is much cleaner, there's not so much filth over there. Maybe I would say that it's obligated in a mezuzah. Kamash Malon, that's what the Bryce is teaching you when it adds. That even a private bathhouse is also going to be put there from a mezuzah. And then Rashi adds, why does it say Beis Atfila, which is basically a mikveh? Why is a place of a mikveh potter from a mezuzah? And Rashi says, because the Gemara and Ahmed Beis will tell us that any room, any place that's not made for a Tash Mishal Kovet, it's not made for a dignified use, like a room where you live in, you eat in, you sleep in, and so on, it's just made to go to a mikveh there, that's not called a Tash Mishal Kovet, it's not a dignified use, you potter from a mezuzah, as we'll see soon in Ahmed Beis. So this is all of Kahana's interpretation of the Braisa. Now the Gemara brings Rav Yehuda's interpretation of the Braisa. Rav Yehuda metarets l'taimei, he explains this Braisa according to his opinion. Hachi ketani, this is how you have to read the Braisa. Beisecha, beisecha miyuchad lo, a house that's designated for your own use. Prat, this excludes lo, beisa teven, beisa baka, beisa eitzim, beisa eitris, all these different kinds of storages. Shepturim mina mezuzah, that are potter from mezuzah. And according to Rav Yehuda, what is the Braisa speaking about? A filam iskashtais. Even if the, these storages are also <coughs> used by women to adorn themselves there, still it has some kind of private use, but it's still potter from mezuzah. That's what the first Tana and the Braise is saying. And on that, the second Tana says, the yesh mechaivin v'miskashtois. There's another opinion that says that because women also use it to adorn themselves there, therefore it's going to be chayv and mezuzah. 
Avostam, if it's just a plain storage and there is no other private use you have there, Divriakail Potter. Everybody would agree that it's Potter. This is Rav Yudah's opinion that the argument is only in a case where it also has a, a use for the women to adorn themselves there. How does Rav Yudah explain the second half of the Braisa? The MS Omru, everybody agrees, Beis Akise, Beis Abursiki, Beis Amerchat, Beis Atvila, all these places are Potter from Amazoza. And then it said in the end of the Braisa that the Noshim are Ne'oisai Spehen. What does Ne'oisai Spehen mean according to Rav Yudah's opinion? that is and even if these are places that women adorn themselves there, nevertheless, here everybody will agree that it's potter from a mezuzah. Even though in the first half of the Brais it says there's an argument if it's chayav a potter from a mezuzah if women adorn themselves there. But if here everybody will agree that it's potter, because these places have a lot of filth in it, whether it's a bathroom, whether it's a tannery, whether it's a bathhouse, and so on. So here everybody will agree that it's potter from a mezuzah, and the fact that the women use it also to adorn themselves there does not change its status. It's still going to be potter from a mezuzah. So this is the machleik is here between Rav Yudah and Rav Kahana. But now finally the Gemara will bring a braise which will disprove Rav Yudah's opinion and we stay with Rav Kahana's opinion. Rav Yehuda, according to Rav Yudah's opinion, is it true that if you have just a plain storage house that has no other use, everybody will agree that it's potter from a mezuzah? There's a braise as follows. Vatanya, the braise says... Put up the, the mezuzah on your gates. The gates, the entrances to your house. The entrances into the courtyard. The entrances into the province. The entrances into cities. And then the Braise says, Verefes, and a barn, Velulin, and uh, also a um, chicken coop. It has, has to have a large enough of an opening. A place where you store straw. Storages for for wine or oil. All these places are chayav and mezuzah. So right here you have a clear b'raisa with an opinion that says that even storages are obligated in mezuzah. So this is clearly refuting Rabbi Yudah's opinion. The Gemara first continues with the remainder of the b'raisa. Yochoyel shani marbe av beis shar. I would think that you should also include that this uh, base shah, which was th- th- this, this little ha- house or this little entranceway that was built to a courtyard or an achsade, this little hallway that's b- built as an entrance into a house. Nobody lives there, but it's just like this entranceway. Or a mirpeses, which is a porch, which serves as an entrance into a second floor. So I would think that all these places are also obligated in a mezuzah. Tamad leima bayis. The pasuk says bayis ma bayis miyuchad ledira. Just like a house has a use for a dwelling, so yatsu elu that excludes these cases. Sheem yuchadim ledira. They're not used at all for a dwelling. They're just like to pass through as an entrance into a courtyard, into into a house. Raisa continues. Yochoshani mar ba'af beis akise beis aburseki beis amerchat to beis atfila. I would think that a bathroom or a tannery or a, 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 a bathhouse, a, a, a mikveh, should also be chayv and a mezuzah. Talmud Leimah, the Pesach says, bias. Bias means, ma bias ha'osay l'chavay, just like a house, I mentioned before, has to be a place that's made for dignified use, where a house is used. Avkal ha'osay l'chavay, there has to be a room that you use it in a dignified manner. Yatsu elu, all these places, she'ein asuyin l'kavit. They're not used for dignified use, and therefore they're potter from a mezuzah. Again, the Braise says, Yocho shani marba af harabayis va'alishkais va'azaris. I would think that in the base of Mikdash, in the harabayis, all the chambers, and in the azaris, I would think that all the entrances there need a mezuzah. Tamud lay ma bayis, we learn out from bayis as well, ma bayis shuhu choyl. Just like the word bayis in the Pasuk is speaking about a place for a normal person in mundane use, so too the obligation of a mezuzah is a gate that's used for a person privately for mundane use. That excludes these places that are kaidish and therefore the potter from a mezuzah. But now the Gemara concludes, this refutes Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, because in the first part of the B'rai said, clearly said that storage houses are obligated in a mezuzah. And Rabbi Yehuda said that everybody agrees that it's potter from a mezuzah. No, they're not. So the same brides as said. Mm. Right, right, right. But apparently, because in order for a person to live, you have to have place for storage as well. So it's sort of considered to be an extension of Yadira, even though you don't actually dwell there. But every house has to have a storage room. So therefore, according to this opinion, the storage is sort of considered to be an extension of Yadira. 
If you live on the second, you, you need to have a merpesis, or you need to have. Okay, a, so the merpesis is mamish like a, it's like a, you walk through it. It's mamish like a small area, it's a small area that you walk through. It's not like a whole room that you store things there and you go there to take things from there. So it's it's a little bit less. So over there, everyone agrees that it's potter. Tani Rav Shmuel Bayude Kamei the Rav. So Rav Yehuda Rav Shmuel Bayude learned in front of Rav the following brayse. Shisha Sha'arim Pturim in Amazusa. There are six different kinds of entrances that are potter from Amazusa. Beis Teven entrance to a place that you store straw there, base a bakar, a barn, base a eitzim, storage for wood, base a oitzers, and all other kinds of storages for wine, oil, and so on. And then b'shara modai. Then he says a, a shar, an entrance that was made in modai, and this is basically an arch <clears throat> that has a round roof, right? Like you see in the picture on the side on the left of the Gemara, the bottom picture is a shara modai, and this is the main uh, shar that the Gemara will focus on in a moment. And v'shar she'ena mekore, and if you have an entrance that does not have a roof over it, it just has the two sides of, of walls, but not a roof over it. And v'shar she'ena gevoye yud, and if you have a doorway, an entrance that does not have the height of ten tefachim, it's also potter from a mezuzah. Amalei, so Rav asked Rav Shmuel by Yehuda, pasachto b'shisha, you begin saying that you have six cases of entrances that are potter from a mezuzah. But if you actually count what we just read, there are seven. There are seven cases here that are mentioned that are part from a mezuzah. Malay, so Rav Shmuel by Yudah answered him, Shara Modai, the case of Shara Modai is not counted as one, as one of these six. Why? Because Tanoihi, an archway, is actually a machloik is Tanoim if it's chayiv in a mezuzah or not. The Tanya, because we learned in Abraiz, and we learned this already before in Eidavin, and also it's mentioned in Masech the Shabbos about the whole story of an archway. So it says there as follows, Kippa, you have this doorway that's built like a kippa, round, a round entrance. Rab Meir Mechayev the mezuzah, Rab Meir says it's obligated in the mezuzah. The Chachamim Poitrin, and Chachamim say that it's potter from a mezuzah. So we'll see if the Gemara will explain exactly the case that they argue in. But the point of this argument, just as, a, as the beginning of the point here, the reason they're arguing about this is because when it narrows and it becomes round, so in that area that it narrows, there's less than four Tfachim of an opening, and therefore there's no chiv of mezuzah. In order to be chay of a mezuzah, what's the minimum requirement for the entrance, the width and height of the entrance? The height has to be ten tfachim, and the width has to be four tfachim. So when it when an arch where it narrows at the top, so over there in that area it doesn't have the width of four tfachim, so therefore Rav Yudis Rameh that it says that it's going to be Rameh still says it's chay of a mezuzah, and we'll see soon in the Gemara why. But Chachamim say it loses the whole width that it needs, and therefore you're potter of the mezuzah. Uh, the Brayse continues, Vishavim, they both agree, Hashem Yesh Beraglo Asara, that if in the bottom of this entranceway, before it uh, rounds out at the top, it already has the height of 10 Tfachim, with the width of 4 Tfachim, Shechayeves B'mezuzah, that it's going to be Chayev B'mezuzah. Then over there, the fact that it rounds out at the top, doesn't matter because it already has the height of ten tefachim below that, and therefore it's, everybody would agree that it's chayiv. So now the Gemara will explain exactly in what case they're arguing. Omar Abaye, so Abaye explained as follows: the kulam, everybody agrees, like it said in the Brisa. Or sorry, not I didn't didn't say this in the Brisa, but Abaye explains. Everybody will agree. Gevoya yud, if it's tall ten tefachim, the ein beraglo gimel, but it does not have a height of at least three tfachim that are wide, four tfachim. Right? It, it begins rounding out very close to the bottom of this entrance. So even below three tfachim, it does not have the width of four tfachim. So then everybody will agree, Valaf Klumi. This is not considered to be a proper entrance for a mezuzah. Inami, another case that everybody will agree, Yesh Beragla Gimel. It does have the height of three tfachim, but if you measure from the bottom, to the top of this archway, it does not even have at all the height of ten tefachim. So then the law of Kulumi, everybody will agree, it doesn't have the height of ten tefachim, it's potter from a mezuzah. So what are they arguing? The argument is only, that has the height of ten tefachim, and it does have the width of four tefachim in the bottom three tefachim, but but then when you get to the top part of it, where it starts rounding out, over there, it does not have that width of four tfachim. It has it at the bottom, but it does not have it at the top. 
That's the question. So it has a proper height, and it only has the proper width on the bottom, but at the top, where it begins rounding out, it does not have the proper width. So what's the basis of their machlekes? However, if you look at the thickness of the wall of this entrance, it does have a wall thick enough that you could carve out this archway to make it into a square entrance in order to have the right width for the entrance. So what's the machlech? Rav Meir's Meir's opinion is that we consider it, we imagine as if this has been carved out in order to complete it to the right size. Why do we imagine it to be this way? So Rashi explains, because according to Rav Meir, it already has a shame of a Pesach. It already has a, it considered, it has a status of an opening because at the bottom it has the right width. It has the right width in the height of three tfachim, right? If it's less than three tfachim, then it doesn't have that width, then it's love. So then it's like it's completely closed up. But it already has, it's considered to be an opening because three tfachim, it has the width of four tfachim. So once it has that right name and status of a Pesach at the bottom, even though at the top it rounds out, but we consider it as if it's completely open at the top as well, and therefore it's chayv and mezuzah. Rabbanan Savri, however, Rabbanan's opinion is, if it's lacking that width at the top, even though you could imagine as if it's been carved out, we don't use such a kind of a rule. I look at the top and say that it doesn't have that right space, it doesn't have the width of four tfachim at the top, and therefore it's potter from a mezuzah. So that was the case that they argued about. The Gemara comes back to other scenarios of whether it's chayv or potter from a mezuzah. Tana Rabbanan Abraisa, we learned, Beis Akneses, a shul, or Beis Isha, a house or a woman lives in it. Beis Shutfin, a house of partners, Chayev is mezuzah. These places are obligated in a mezuzah. So the Gemara asks, Pshita, it's obvious there should be Chayev in a mezuzah, why not? So the Gemara explains, Ma'o, the time I would think, Beis Echa, it says Beis Echa, the Beis Echa is Lashen Zachar. The Loi Beis therefore that excludes a woman, a place where a woman lives. Beis Echa, it says a singular term, the Loi Bateyem, maybe that excludes a place where partners are living there. Kamash Mulan, that's the Chiddush here, and it says that no, that these places are Chayv and a Mezuzah. So the Gemara asks, but Be'em Ochan Nami. Maybe Takai would say, why don't I read the Pasuk literally that they should be Pateh from a Mezuzah? On my cross, the Gemara answers, because when the Pasuk says the Mitzvah of Mezuzah, it says, that this will bring, increase the days of your life. So, Hani Bo Chai, only when men need life, or a single person living in a place needs life, Hani Loi Bo Chai. And a woman does not need life. So therefore, we learn from here that even a woman is also chayv in a mezuzah. Right? That, that's regarding a woman. That women have to live as well, so they need a mezuzah. And, and regarding a partners or many people that are living together, because it says, yimeichem, bimeivineichem, so the Mepharshim say from that we know that they are chayv in a mezuzah as well. So, ela beischa lomali. If so, if anyways the Pasuk is telling us, that even many people together, or even a woman is chayv in a mezuzah, why does the Pasuk use the term beischa, singular term? What do we learn from this word? So the Gemara says it's a different drasha. Kederave, we learn from what, like, what Rave said. Amar Rave, word beischa should be read, derech bi oscha, the place, the position, where you pl- put the mezuzah. You put the mezuzah on the way when you enter into the house. And on which side of the doorpost do you put the mezuzah when you enter into the house? When a person picks up his feet to walk, a person picks up his right foot first to walk. So when you walk into the house, facing the entrance and walking in, so you have to put the mezuzah on the right, because that's the, the right foot is what a person enters within first. It's interesting, some of our shem actually say, based on this Gemara, that if you're left-handed and you begin walking with your left foot first, you should have to put up your mezuzah, on the left side of the doorpost first. But well, that's not the way we pass in the place can be say that it doesn't make a difference if even if you're left handed you put up the mezuz on the right side. Tanya Dach a different price to be learned, a base knesses, a shul, base a shutfin, partners live together, base isha, a woman lives there, metam and binagoyim. All these places, if it has a nega, it could become tome. So again the Gemara asks the same question, Pshita, sure, why not? why should it be any different? And says the Gemara, Mao the Taimah, because based on this Pasuk, I would think, Uvo Asher Loi Habayis. Loi is Lashon Zachar, and it's singular as well. Loi, Veloi La. Maybe Loi means only a man, not a woman. Loi, Veloi Lahen. Maybe only one person living in a house, but not a few people together. Over there, there's no Din of Negayim. Kamash Malam, that's why this Brasa teaches me that the Din of Negayim is even in such places. So the Gemara says, But Veim Achanami. Maybe I should say that the, the Din of Negayim does not apply there because of this word Loi. Gemara answers, 
in the houses of your inheritance, and it uses a plural term, and it includes even women that have an inheritance in Eretz Yisrael. So the Gemara says, Ela loy lomali. Why does it use a term of vasha loya by a singular term? So the Gemara answers, this is coming, it's a drasha that teaches me something else of what the cause of the Nagayim are. A person that designates his house only for himself. He does not do any favor for anyone to ever lend out any of his kalim to anybody. And he tells people when they ask him for a favor to borrow something. He says, I have none. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mepharsamai. David will bring a nega on his house and David is going to publicize that he does have, that he does have what to give to other people. Why? How? When he has a nega and he's forced to empty out his house of all of his kalim. That's when the nega will come. So loy is a hint telling you why the nega happened to you because you kept everything loy for yourself. A person though that does chesed and he, or he lends out his kalim for other people that he will not have a nega in his house. Now the Gemara goes back to the Beis HaKnesses. We mentioned before Beis HaKnesses regarding the Goyim, that there's a din of a nega and a Beis HaKnesses, and the same thing regarding a mezuzah. So it seemed from what it said before that a Beis HaKnesses is also chayv in a mezuzah. So the Gemara now brings another b'raise. Well, Beis HaKnesses ni metama bin a Goyim, <clears throat> there's a shul have the halacha to become tommy with a nega, but Tanya, but we learned in a different brayse. I would think that a shul would become tommy through a nega. So Tamad Laima, the pasuk says, "Uva shol only one that he owns the house. Me shemiyuchad loy. From this pasuk, I learn only a house that's owned by a person privately. Yatsa elo, which excludes a shul, she'em yuchadim loy, that are not designated for a person privately. So this is a question. Here we see that a, a shul is potter from a, a, a mezuzah, or there is no negayim in it. And before we said that, it, that there is negayim, and there is a mechiv of mezuzah there. So the Gemara gives three answers to this. Like Kashi, it's not a question. One answer is harab meyer and harab banan. It's an argument between rab meyer and rab banan. And the Gemara brings the source for this. The Tanya we learned in the Braise, Beis HaKnesses, Sheyeshba, Beis Dira Lechazen. A shul that has a dwelling for a chazen that lives there. The chazen HaKnesses, that is. That's the, the Shamish of the shul. Chai of Mezuz, it's obligated in Mezuz because of this dwelling. B'Sheim Ba Beis Dira, but if there's nobody that lives in the shul, Rab Meyer Mechaev, Rab Meyer says that it's Chai of Mezuzah, V'Chachamim Paitrim, and the Chachamim say that it's Pater from Mezuzah. So right over here we see an argument regarding a shul, that nobody lives there, if it's chayv or potter from a mezuzah. So that's the machlekes of the two b'raises. If you buy say another answer, we could say hava or rabbanon, both b'raises are rabbanon, and the like kashir, there's no contradiction of the two b'raises. Ha, the isba beis dira, and the b'raises that it says that it's chayv and mezuzah is because it has a dwelling for someone to live there. And ha, the lesba beis dira, and the b'raises that it says that it's potter is because nobody's living there. Or a third answer, both prices are speaking about a shul that nobody lives there. So what's the difference? The krachim, the price that says that you put it from a mezuzah, refers to a shul that's in a large city. And as she explains, many different people from different places come into this shul. And therefore, it's a shul that has absolutely no like private ownership to it whatsoever. So many different people come in there, like a place like 770 or a place that so many people come in there. That's the kind of place that would be potter from a mezuzah. And vaha the kfarim. And then you have a shul that's more like a private shul in a small village where even though it's, it's, it's more than one person that uses the shul, but it sort of has a private ownership. It's recognized who are the owners of that shul and therefore it's going to be chayiv in the mezuzah. Just to finish off, and you get to shuls, so a base aknesses, which is taka only used for strictly for davening, and otherwise there's no other use to the shul, is potter from a mezuzah. You have today, if you go to certain shuls that are taka strictly only used for that, there's no mezuzah on it. But the other shuls today all have an archive and a mezuzah because it's a place that people don't only come to daven, people daven and learn there and spend the entire day there. A person can be there from morning till night, and therefore it's considered to be a base dira and it's chayv and a mezuzah.